In this series of tutorials we'll be looking at some of the basic concepts behind developing tile-based games. In this first episode we'll simply be drawing a tile map to a canvas element on a web page using JavaScript. We'll begin by creating a simple HTML document. In the head of the document we'll create a JavaScript source tag which will later contain the JavaScript source code of our game. In the body of the document we'll create a canvas element with the ID game and a width and height of 400 pixels. This is the canvas element to which our game will later be rendered. For the rest of this tutorial we will be working exclusively in JavaScript. All of our JavaScript will go inside the script tag we created in the head of the document earlier. To begin with, we'll create some global variables which will be used throughout the game script. First of all, our context variable will store the 2D drawing context of the canvas element itself. We'll also create some globals for the width and height of each tile that will be drawn to the map in pixels. and the width and the height of the map itself in number of tiles. Some additional globals will be used for keeping track of frame rate. We'll also create an array called game map which will store all of the map tiles which will make up our map. Tiles 0 will be impassable and 1 will be considered passable. Simply by looking at the map, you can get a good idea of how the map will look when it's drawn to the screen as we've laid the map out in the columns and rows corresponding to how they will appear on the map itself. Next, we'll create a function to handle the load event of the window. We will assign the CTX variable, the 2D drawing context of our canvas element. We'll also let the window know that when it's ready for us to begin drawing to the canvas, we'll handle doing so with our draw game function. We'll also set a font for the canvas which will be used when drawing the frame rate.
From here, the rest of the work will be done by our draw game function. When the function begins, we'll simply check if the ctx variable is still null. If it is, we'll leave the function as nothing else can be done. Next, we'll calculate the current second. This will be used for keeping track of the frame rate during the game. If the current second is not the same as the one we're currently counting frames for, then we'll update the current second accordingly, and the frame count for the frame's last second will be assigned. Otherwise, we simply increase the frame counts. We'll now draw the tiles that make up the game map. We begin by looping through each row from back to front. For each row, we then loop from left to right. Using a switch statement, we choose which colour to draw the current tile with. We find the value at the corresponding game map index by multiplying y by the map width and adding the x value. In our example, if a wall is present, we will draw with a dark grey. Otherwise, we'll consider the tile a path and we will draw with a very light grey. We will then draw a rectangle at the corresponding position for this tile. This is calculated by the x value times by the tile width and the y value times by the tile height. In this animated example you can see how the map tiles will be drawn from top to bottom of the screen in an increasing value of y for each row and then an increasing value of x for each column on each row. The index is calculated by multiplying the y value by the map width and adding the current x value. Finally, we'll set the fill style to a bright red. And with this, we will draw the current frame rate. We'll also tell the window that when it's ready for us to draw another animation frame to the canvas to call this function again. If you followed the steps correctly after saving the document, you should see the following on the screen. In our next lesson, we'll look at adding a character to the map.